Hi, I'm Jay Johnson, President and CEO of WindowPurchase.com, which is an interactive website to help people learn more about Windows. I've also published a couple books on Windows called What Window Companies Don't Want You to Know and How to Shop for Windows and Doors. Anyway, here's your tip of the day. It's going to be on Bay and Bow shells. There's no doubt that a Bay and Bow can make a house look better from the inside and out, but that's only as long as it doesn't start falling apart or deteriorating. So let me give you an example. Here in my iPad, underneath, this should have been cladded with aluminum or vinyl. You could see the insulation strip between the window and the wall. Pieces just started to fall off. It started to rot away. Then here on this picture, what you see, the bottom of this mullion here is starting to detach from the seat board underneath. And it's not because it's a bearable window, it's because it's a poor design. You can also see on the inside here the separation and that led to water leakage on the inside of their window every time it rained. And this is a very common problem where this attaches to the seat board underneath. Here this looks good from the curb but when you get up on the window it doesn't look so good. So let me show you how to avoid some of these problems. The first thing is is the seat board insulated? I can't tell you how many clients I consult with and they're like, oh, you're, you're the fourth guy we've had out. And I ask them, well, did they tell you what it's going to be made out of? Well, I don't know. I think oak. Well, how could you not know if the guy was there? Anyway, some of your species that you have, depending on the company, is going to be oak, birch, possibly maple. Another thing is, is the seat board insulated? I'm talking about the whole piece down here. Now, some companies only use this. This is their seat board. It's maybe half an inch thick. An upgrade from that would be this. And let me put this into perspective. That's what you got. Now, don't assume it's insulated, but I'm going to take the middle piece and put it next to this one. Okay, so now we got an insulated seat board here. That's going to keep the noise down from the outside. It's also going to be a lot more thermally efficient at keeping heat and cold where you want it to stay. The other thing I ask is, do you know if you're going to have any big knots in the wood? You ever go and get a sheet of plywood over at the box store? It's got these big knots in it. Well, don't assume it ain't going to have knots in it because how are you going to paint over those things or stain? A better bay shell or bow shell will come knot free, no big knots in it. They will also be on the top layers, furniture grade veneer wood. Like on this particular one, everything above the foam is furniture grade veneer wood. Underneath is the only place there's shop grade plywood and then the whole bottom of this gets cladded in aluminum or vinyl for moisture protection and to keep any type of wood boring bugs or insects out of the seat board. That's how you handle that. Now the attachment point here on the mullions, that's one of the weak spots by design on a lot of companies' windows and here's why. I want to show you picture, if you just bear with me a moment, of what I'm referring to. Here you have a window and then you see the mullion it is inserted in. This is the cheapest mullion system on the market by far. And let me give you an example of that. You take these two pieces this is supposed to protect the outside. There's your slit. You take this and you insert it in that slit. Then they literally stuff one window on one side and one on the other. This stuff has no structural support, no insulating value. There's nothing to this. I mean, I wouldn't even use this on a fix and flip. Your better mullion systems So this piece here is what's on the opposite side of this. And then this piece here is underneath this, but you don't see this because they trimmed it out with a very nice decorative piece. And it gets better. This material here is called timber strand. It's an engineered lumber. It's made from aspen trees, urethanes and resins from aspen trees. It's 25% stronger than wood and it doesn't absorb or release, release moisture. Now, if this is a great mull system, but you can still do something wrong in designing the window. 
This is the bottom seat board. A lot of companies, if they even have this piece, will take this and put it right on top and then just caulk the heck out of it right along here trying to keep water and everything else from getting underneath. Now you can also start to see why that seat board would gravitate away from it over time depending on how it's installed. A better system, overlap. I mean, it's a no-brainer. And then all of this gets platted from underneath so that nothing can come up and in or underneath. It's a completely sealed off system. Not done yet. If you take, for example, a Bayer bow shell or anything heavy, right now every bit of this weight is supported off of my hands. The weight of the shell, the weight of the windows, all the weights dangling off the top. What is to keep the seat board from separating from the outside mullion? What's to keep it from coming apart? Your better manufacturers, by choice, do something interesting. This is a threaded rod. This threaded rod system goes all the way down through the mullion and then there's an attachment point underneath. So, instead of all the weight of the windows and the shell dangling off the top, you have a support system from underneath, kind of like where my hands are, which also keeps the seat board from sagging away from the wall system here. So, just like windows, your better designs are always engineered better. All designs look pretty decent when they're new, but that's the problem. Nobody's going to walk through your door and start showing you an ugly window or an ugly Bayer bow shell. They're going to flip through all these lovely pictures and you're going to get caught up in it and then you're going to get it. And then bad stuff like this happens and you wonder, well, why? I spent four grand for that sucker or eight grand. I mean, I measured one the other day. It's 146 inches across. That's got to be a tongue and groove. Uh, maple or oak system. So when you have companies come out for bay and bow windows, you have to realize you need to get beyond the beauty, you have to understand how it's built, and then you have to understand what a poorly designed shell is and why, and what a better designed shell is and why. Anyway, that's my tip of the day. I really hope this helps. If you like my website, windowpurchase.com, please subscribe and look out for more videos. Thank you so much.